This story takes place in 18th century Europe when the Age of Enlightenment begins to spread throughout the country. Caroline writes a letter to her children, wanting to tell them about a man named Johan. She wants to tell them about her relationship with him, and why they did the things they did. Caroline wants to tell her children the truth before it's too late. She begins by recalling the events that happened nine years ago. Caroline is on a field in England with her aides. She is about to embark on a journey to Denmark, where she is arranged to marry the king, Christian VII. Caroline has been preparing for the marriage since she was young. Before she leaves, Caroline wonders what she would do if the royalties in Denmark didn't like her. Her guardian tells her everything will be fine as long as she can make the king visit her chamber at night. With that, Caroline sets off to Denmark. Once in Denmark, Caroline is greeted by Louise, her new aide, along with the king's private tutor. Caroline leaves the carriage to meet Christian and sees him hiding like a kid behind a tree. They greet each other, and Caroline rides with Christian back to the palace. Caroline eagerly waits for Christian to speak, but he doesn't. Instead, he simply looks at her chest with a slight disappointment on his face. Caroline notices what he's doing but stays silent. Christian averts his eyes, and the atmosphere between them throughout the journey remains tense and extremely awkward. When they arrive at the capital, Caroline notices the terrible state of the place and its people. On the other hand, Christian doesn't seem to care and is simply focused on amusing himself until they arrive at the palace. Upon arrival at the palace, Christian immediately greets and plays with his dog, Gourmand. Caroline smiles, seemingly enjoying the sight of the king being playful with his dog. In a room somewhere in the castle, the king's stepmother, Julian Marie, spitefully watches their arrival. In the same room, the prominent statesman named Goldberg tutors Julian's son, who believes he won't have any use for what he's teaching him. Later at dinner, Caroline pulls her chair nearer to Christian, attracting the attention of everyone around her. She tells Christian it's because he's too far away. The king is amused, saying that Caroline seems to have a flair for drama. Then, Caroline asks if he will visit her bedroom later that night. Christian consults his tutor, and when he says it's all right, Christian agrees to her queen's request. Sometime later, Caroline plays the piano while Christian and the rest watch. Julian praises Caroline while discreetly mocking Christian's talent for art, leaving him irritated. As a result, he vents his anger at Caroline, shaming her in front of everyone. Despite that, Christian visits Caroline's bedchamber late that night as they've agreed during dinner earlier. They don't waste time and simply get down to business. After that, Caroline lives her life as queen and puts up with Christian's antics until she got pregnant with their child, Friedrich. Since she's already accomplished her mission, Caroline no longer feels the need to maintain the facade. She distances herself from Christian whenever the king tries to visit her. Louise says that they are busy playing chess. As a result, Christian gets frustrated with the situation and fires Louise. Caroline eventually gives birth to Friedrich and resigns to her fate as queen. One day, Christian lets Caroline know that he'll be away 40 years to tour Europe. Caroline says she doesn't care whether he's with her or not. In a Danish colony in Germany later, Dr. Johann Strunzi is summoned by Count Ranzo. While Johann inspects the cow's junk, Ranzo tells him they know about his revolutionary free-thinking works. They use this as leverage to make Johann do them a favor. It turns out that Ranzo and his friend Brandt used to be at the top of the Danish court. However, when the previous king passed away, they got kicked off. Now, they've caught wind about the Christian being sick in the head and needing a doctor. They want Johan to audition for the position and help them get their prestigious positions in court back. Since Johan can't decline their offer and finds himself in the doctor's tryouts a few days later. When it's Johan's turn to examine the king, he asks Christian's tutor what seems to be the problem. The tutor believes Christian's mental health issues stem from his excessive meat beating. Johan sees Christian in a terrible mood. When asked what seems to be the problem, Christian implies that the court thinks he's sick because he drinks a lot, likes to fight, and loves women with big jugs. The two then start exchanging lines from their favorite plays, which makes Christian suddenly interested in Johan. As a result, Johan gets hired instead of the other doctors who love wearing the same wigs. When Christian returns to Copenhagen after he tours Europe, only Caroline and the rest of the castle staff greet him. Christian gets disappointed, but before he can throw a tantrum, Johan steps in to defuse the situation successfully. Christian's fondness for Johan grows. He even tells the doctor to join him at the council meeting to prevent him from getting bored. In the council meeting, Johan observes that Christian is clueless. He does nothing but sign the laws the council men deem fit for their interests and not of the people. As for Christian, he only thinks of it as another one of those annoying chores he has to do as a king. He even tells Johan that everyone in the council thinks he is crazy. One night, Johan calls Ranzo and Brandt to a brothel to honor their agreement. He lets them meet Christian, who welcomes them back to his court. After a night of merrymaking, the men return to the castle. Caroline scolds Christian for his unkingly behavior. Christian simply makes fun of her in front of the men by mockingly calling Caroline his mother. While practicing swordplay with Johan the next day, Christian complains that of all the women in the world, he ended up with the most boring one. 
Johan says that maybe Caroline is ill. Christian thinks it might be true because no one can be that boring. He orders Johan to examine Caroline and turn her into a fun queen. Of course, Johan finds nothing wrong with Caroline, only that she's always grumpy. So, he suggests they move to the summer estate for some fresh air. Before Caroline leaves, she sees and borrows one of Johan's illegal books. The royal family moves to the summer estate, and during that time, Caroline notices how fond Christian is of Johan. She even sees him emulating the doctor's actions, like a boy looking up to his big brother. Caroline and Johan also get closer during that time. They start getting more interested in each other after sharing their ideals that follow the Enlightenment path. One day, Johan learns that the smallpox virus has reached the capital and is already close to the palace. He suggests having Frederick inoculated to protect him from the virus, which the council members find preposterous. However, since Caroline and Christian believe in Johan, they agree with his suggestion. After finishing the inoculation, Johan tells the royal couple the only thing they can do is wait. Christian asks him to sit with them, and the three hold hands to calm their nerves. Friedrich's inoculation is a success, since it could help save more lives. Caroline suggests an inoculation drive for the people. Sadly, the council denies her request for budget reasons. While returning to her chambers sometime later, Caroline finds an envelope. It seems that Johan has finally slid her DM, flexing some of his enlightened writings to her, which she enjoys. During a party, Brandt warns Johan for being a fool and trying to have an affair with the queen. He says he likes Johan and doesn't want to mourn his severed head. Johan uses the no-comment technique and continues pursuing the Caroline route. When they meet one afternoon, Caroline makes Johan aware of his influence over Christian. It seems she wants him to use this influence to bring about change in the kingdom. Johan heeds Caroline's advice and decides to give it a shot. He convinces Christian to use his authority as king in the council and have laws approved. Even if Christian doesn't understand the intricacies of the court, all he needs to do is act and read the lines that Johan writes for him. They try their plan during the next council meeting, and Christian surprises the council members, leaving them in awe. He manages to pass the law to triple the number of waste collectors on the streets. He also doesn't forget to make his dog an honorary council member. During a masquerade ball, Johan and Caroline share a dance. By the end of it, Johan gets cold feet and leaves. Caroline follows him, and they finally let their feelings take control by sharing a kiss. The next day, Caroline is in a dazed state from trying to figure out what she truly wants to do. Eventually, she decides to slide Johan a DM. After reading her letter, Johan goes to the palace kitchen, locking eyes with a young boy as he enters a secret passage. The passage leads to Caroline's bedroom, and once there, the two give in to their base desires. After that, Johan and Caroline continue to use Christian to turn their revolutionary ideas into laws in the kingdom. They also continue with their affair, using a secret passage. For a while, they thought they could bring about change, but they were mistaken. They eventually realized that the council was too strong. The more Christian got rejected, the more despondent he became, making things harder for Johan and Caroline's group. Then, one night, Caroline says it's all because Christian is alone in the council and suggests making Johan a member to support him. Although Johan thinks it will be next to impossible, they still give it a shot since it's their only chance against the Whigs. Meanwhile, Julian and Goldberg discuss Christian's recent laws and conclude that someone is influencing him. Goldberg believes that it's all Johan's fault. Julian begins snooping around for dirt on Johan and then exposes him to the council members. As they are on their way to the next council meeting, Christian, who is planning to make Johan a council member, says something is off. To Christian's surprise, the council already knows and declines his plan. They order the guards to arrest and banish Johan from the kingdom. However, the council didn't expect Christian to stop them. He orders the guards to release Johan and then uses his power as a king to dissolve the council entirely. Christian then replaces the council with a cabinet consisting of him and Johan. Johan praises Christian for what he's done and says they can now bring change to the kingdom. They don't waste time and start using their revolutionary ideas to implement laws that improve the lives of the citizen. Hundreds of laws were published, including the establishment of orphanages and even the removal of censorship. Denmark quickly turned into a pioneering country admired throughout Europe. One day, a maid cleaning Caroline's bed smells something strange on her seats. It's probably just the mayonnaise she ate, but who knows. Elsewhere in the castle, Johan sees a letter from Voltaire to Christian. Voltaire seems aware of what's happening in Denmark and sends a letter praising Christian for his revolutionary work as its king. Johan is excited about Voltaire's letter and shows it to Caroline. However, he becomes speechless after Caroline reveals she's pregnant with his child. To salvage the situation, the two decide to make Christian resume his visits to Caroline's bedchambers. They plan to make it so people would believe Christian is still the father of Caroline's new child. On top of that, they also decide to stop seeing each other privately. While working, Christian tries to have some fun as usual, but a frustrated Johan screams at him. Quickly realizing his mistake, Johan apologizes and asks Christian to sign a law. 
allowing him to approve laws without needing Christian's signature. He tells Christian it's a way to free him from his boring paperwork duties as king. Sometime later, Ranso and Johan have a falling out after Johan fails to help Ranso with his debts how he wants him to. Then, one afternoon, Julian sees Johan and Caroline acting a little too familiar with each other. She realizes that they have an affair with each other and that Caroline's child is actually Johan's. She immediately starts investigating. And one of the maids, the one who was cleaning Caroline's bed earlier, decides to reveal the Manet's incident. Caroline finally gives birth to a baby girl named Louise. And everyone in the castle is excited. She sends everyone away except Johan so they can spend time with their child. Julian and her followers spread rumors around town about Caroline's affair with Johan and that he's the father of her daughter. Christian gets wind of the rumors and runs amok in his favorite brothel. Brandt lets Johan know about it, and the two rush to the brothel. Christian confronts Johan about the rumor, and the doctor denies it. He then realizes who's behind the rumors and goes to meet Goldberg. Johan doesn't hesitate to relieve him of his court duties and send him away. For damage control, Johan tells Christian to stay inside the castle. He assigns the young boy from the kitchen from earlier to be Christian's companion. He also leaves Bran with him, an idea Christian dislikes. Sadly, things worsen, leaving Caroline and Johan at their wit's end. Johan is even forced to reinstate censorship in the country to prevent the spread of more rumors about their affair. One day, Caroline freaks out after seeing Christian play with Louise. She lashes out at him and tells him he'll never be alone with the child again. Frustrated, Christian eventually snaps and gets into a scuffle with Bran during dinner. Johan manages to stop them and talk some sense into Christian. The two hug each other, and Christian says he wants everything to return to what they were before. Meanwhile, Julian and Goldberg put their plans to overthrow Caroline and Johan into motion. They even manage to bring Ranzo into their cause, promising to remove all his debt, give him a seat at the council, and the assurance that Johan will simply be deported and nothing more. They also manage to rouse the citizens to want to see their king, who hasn't appeared for a long time. Johan asks Christian to show himself to appease the people, but he declines. Instead, he isolates himself and lets Johan handle the problem. As things start to escalate and put pressure on Christian, Goldberg meets with him. He manages to force him into signing the arrest warrant of Caroline, Johan, and Brandt. Julian takes Friedrich from Caroline but leaves Louise with her since she still needs her mother. As for Johan, he gets mistreated in prison until he confesses to his affair with Caroline and conspiring against the court. After several days, Caroline learns that Johan has confessed to his crimes after days of being mistreated. She sends a letter to Christian containing a plea to pardon Johan and Brandt. Later, a priest visits Johan in the dungeons to hear his final confession. While that happens, Christian is uneasy while talking to Goldberg. He's wondering where the people are going and asks if Goldberg is sure the execution isn't on that day, and Goldberg says he is sure. It turns out that he plans to pardon Johan and Brandt at the last minute to surprise them. He's wondering if they will get mad at him, and Goldberg says no. Johan and Brandt get taken into a carriage for their execution. They believe it's only a formality since they've been made aware that Christian will pardon them. Johan says it's a way to show the people that their king is merciful. When they arrive at the execution site, Johan immediately realizes they won't get pardoned. Brandt gets executed first, and when it's Johan's turn, he looks at all the people in front of him before his head gets cut off. Caroline breaks down after hearing the news about Johan's execution. Ranzo confronts Goldberg for breaking his promise to only banish Johan and give him a seat in the council. As for Christian, they treat him as a decoration and ask him to play with his companion all day. Caroline says goodbye to her daughter and lives in Germany with her old friend and aide, Louise. She starts to live out her days there and eventually gets ill. Before passing away, she gives Louise her letters and tells her to hand them over to her children when they are old enough to understand. Time passes, and as the rest of the world moves forward to progress, Denmark regresses to the Middle Ages. Friedrich and Louise Augusta ride a carriage and meet up with Caroline's aide. She gives them Caroline's letter, and they learn the truth. When they return to the castle, the children talk to Christian. With the help of his father, Friedrich stages a coup d'etat and seizes power at the age of 16. He also banishes Julian, Goldberg, and their cabinet from the court. In Friedrich's 55-year long reign, almost all of Johann's laws were reinstated. Friedrich goes even further than Johann and completely abolishes serfdom in the country, liberating the peasants. Subscribe for more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like. It really helps the channel.